everyone, I hope you're doing well. Today's video is on Mia Zapata. Before bands like Nirvana, Pearl Jam, and Alice in Chains, Seattle, Washington was a melting pot for a variety of musicians looking to make it big. Mia Zapata was one of those hungry artists who moved there from Louisville, Kentucky in the 1980s. Looking to build a life off her biggest passion, which was music, at just nine years old, Mia was an established guitarist and pianist, and eventually made her way to continue with music into college, starting the punk rock band, The Gets. The band consisted of Mia as lead singer and three of her friends who she met as an undergrad. In 1989, Mia and the band left Ohio behind for Seattle to take their chances in a new city. Living in a rundown pad, they coined the Rat House to write music together. They established relationships with other well-known bands in the area and began to create a following in the punk grunge scene, performing next to the likes of Nirvana and releasing their debut album in 1991. Everything was falling into place for the talented musician. As each day passed, the gets became more and more successful. In 1993, the band released their second album, another milestone for the rising artist. But sadly, that second release would be their last, as tragedy would strike on July 7, 1993. Earlier that night, Mia went out drinking with some friends at the popular bar, The Comet Tavern. Though things were taking off for her in her professional life, things weren't great in her personal life. As Mia was enduring a bad breakup with her boyfriend and relied heavily on alcohol, as well as her music, to cope. Sometime around midnight, Mia left the Comet Tavern and went to go spend some time with a friend at their apartment to continue her night of drinking. At around 2 a.m., after a few desperate pleas from her friend to spend the night, Mia left to head home, insisting she would take a cab during the late night hours. But Mia didn't take that faithful cab, one that may have changed the course of her life. As Mia's body was found lifeless, propped up in a Christ-like pose on a deserted street around 3.30 a.m., the rising star was dead. Mia was beaten and raped with the official cause of death ruled homicide by strangulation. The weapon? The, stra the drawstrings of her Gitz hoodie she was wearing that evening. To make matters worse, police had little evidence as to who would want to kill her. With the exception of the murderer's saliva that barred no hit in the criminal database. Police were at a standstill. The Seattle music scene was devastated. Beyond her work with the Gitz, Mia was a driving force unlike anyone else of her time. Her band, above all, knew this about their beloved singer and vowed to help police find the brutal killer who took Mia Zapata away from the world she loved. Their first move was to organize a self-defense group called Home Alive, which they did together with punk rock band Seven Year Bitch. The organization not only taught a range of courses, but the group coordinated benefit shows booking some of the country's top talent such as Nirvana, Soundgarden, and punk goddess Joan Jett. Joan became a staple in keeping Mia's memory alive by releasing an album with the gifts called Evil Stig. And she even wrote a song in tribute to the late singer called Go Home, a heartbreaking account of the terror Mia faced that night. The organization, benefit shows, and newly released records had one mission in mind raising enough money to invest in efforts to catch Mia's killer. Thanks to the Home Alive startup and benefit shows, the band made enough money to hire a private detective. Leah Heron was employed by the band for three years to help track down Mia's savage killer. She poured years into Mia's life, following leads through and through by working closely with the police. When the money ran out, Leah continued on her hunt, but Alice was no closer to cracking the case. 
For years, police continued in their search, keeping Mia's file wide open. For one thing they did have was the, D the killer's DNA, a tiny amount of saliva found on Mia's body. In 2001, investigators submitted the DNA into a national criminal database, but sadly nothing matched. But when Jesus Mezquia was arrested in Florida for burglary and domestic abuse a year later, Seattle police got a call that would bring some closure to this tragic story. Mia's killer was finally caught. Jesus was arrested in January 2003 and originally sentenced to 36 years in prison. However, due to a loophole in the system, his conviction was initially overturned in 2005. Thankfully, Jesus, who waived his right to a jury, faced the original judge in the case, who this time successfully sent sentenced him to 36 years again for the brutal rape and murder of Mia. Though he maintains his innocence, Jesus is still serving his sentence and will be for the years to come. His motive for killing Mia remains unknown to this day. As for the late musician's legacy, it lives on stronger than ever. Although the Gits broke up after Mia's murder, they have become a rock icon for musicians everywhere. And Mia, a fem feminist martyr who did not die in vain, as her music, her talent, and her murder is embedded in the hearts of everyone who knew her, who knew the Gits, and appreciated the musical pro prodigy the world quite frankly didn't deserve. Thank you for watching today's video. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you would like to see more videos like this, please subscribe. What paranormal or crime-related mystery would you like to see next? I hope you all have a great day.